Hello students, welcome to Ligis Academy, your educational catalyst. We have already discussed about the basics of cell signaling in our part 1 video. And in this video, we will be focusing on secondary messengers. Secondary messengers are small molecules that relay signals from cell surface receptors to effector proteins. The major classes of secondary messengers are cyclic nucleotides, lipids, ions and gases. About all these we will be discussing in detail. The first type of secondary messengers are cyclic nucleotides which consists of the two major secondary messengers that is CAMP and CGMP. CAMP Cyclic adenosine monophosphate this was discovered by Earl W. Sutherland. CAMP is produced when G protein activates adenylyl cyclase. The downstream targets are protein kinase A, ion channels, etc. Compared to CGMP, CAMP has a very short lifespan. Now, let's have a look to the synthesis and functions of CAMP. The G protein activates adenyl cyclase which converts ATP to CAMP. So normally the G protein will be in an inactive state. Whenever the GTP binds with the G protein, the inactive G protein will become active. And the active G protein further activates adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase is the enzyme which converts ATP to CAMP. So now we have CAMP. So what will the CAMP do? CAMP further activates the protein kinase A. So protein kinase A is already in an inactive state. So whenever CAMP is produced, CAMP will activate the protein kinase A. And the protein kinase A which is activated will further target other protein molecules. For example, phosphodiesterase. The inactive phosphodiesterase will become active by uh, the help of protein kinase A. The major effector proteins of CAMP are EPAC, exchange proteins activated by CAMP and protein kinase A. So the major functions will be the activation of these effector proteins that is the protein kinases and the EPACs and thereby transducing the signals. So we have been discussing a lot about protein kinase A. What is a protein kinase A? Protein kinase A is an inactive tetrameric holoenzyme which is very essential in the activation of several proteins. Most of the protein kinases are CAMP dependent. But of course there are several exceptions. For example protein kinase C is not CAMP dependent. And this protein kinase A have two catalytic units and two regulatory units and the two catalytic units were blocked by the regulatory units. So in protein kinase A there are four units, two regulatory units and two catalytic units. So whenever there is CAMP, CAMP will come and bind to the regulatory units which will further causes the dissociation of the two catalytic units and thus the protein kinase A will be catalytically active. So the major functions of protein kinase A are cellular proliferation, cell cycle, nucleic acid synthesis, inflammation, smooth muscle relaxation, etc. The second effector protein of CAMP is APAC, exchange protein activated by CAMP. So these are specific guanine nucleotide exchange factors for small G proteins. So there will be a GEF domain and a CAMP binding domain. So usually the GEF domain is masked by the N-terminal region which contains the CAMP binding domain. So when CAMP binds, the domain dissociates and expose the GEF. This will allow the APAC to activate small RAS-like proteins. The two APAC isoforms are APAC1 and APAC2 that acts as GEFs for the RAS like GTPSs, RAP1 and RAP2 respectively. 
The second cyclic nucleotide secondary messenger is CGMP, that is cyclic guanosine monophosphate. CGMP is the derivative of GTP. So the guanylate cyclase enzyme will convert GTP to CGMP and pyrophosphate. Compared to CAMP, these have long life. The functions of CGMP are phototransduction, apoptosis regulation, glycogenesis regulation, etc. And they serve as secondary messenger for atrial natriuretic peptide, nitric oxide, rhodopsin, etc. Coming to the importance of CGMP, nitric oxide activates CGMP which in turn dilate the blood vessels. Moreover, in smooth muscle relaxation, the induction is mainly by increase of intracellular CGMP, activation of K plus channels and the stimulation of CGMP dependent protein kinase that activates the myosin light chain phosphatase in muscles. The second type of secondary messengers are lipids. Mainly, the products of lipid metabolism act as lipid secondary messengers. The two major lipid secondary messengers are diacylglycerol called as DAG and inositol triphosphate called as IP3. G proteins and receptor tyrosine kinases will activate phosphatidyl inositol which consists of lipids made of phosphate group, two fatty acid chains, and one inositol molecule. Phosphatidyl inositol will further produce two phosphatidyl inositol phosphates, PIP1 and PIP2. PIP2, that is phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate, is located in the inner layer of plasma membrane. So whenever the hormones and growth factors bind to the G-protein coupled receptors, it will activate an enzyme called phospholipase C. This phospholipase C will further hydrolyze PIP2 to form the major two secondary messengers DAG and IP3. Moving on to DAG, diacylglycerol which stays in the plasma membrane and activates protein kinase C. So basically, DAG acts via protein kinase C. The protein kinase C will further activate other protein targets. Diacylglycerol is also a source for prostaglandins and a precursor of endocannabinoid 2 arachidonoyl glycerol. The second major lipid secondary messenger is IP3 inositol 145 triphosphate as we have said the DAG will stay behind the plasma membrane but in case of IP3 they will move to the cytosol and in the cytosol they bind to ligand gated calcium channels and the calcium channels will open and helps in the release of calcium ions the third category of secondary messengers are ions for example calcium, magnesium, ions, etc. But the most widely used ion is calcium ion. And calcium ions are important in the muscle contraction, neurotransmitter release, etc. Usually, the intracellular calcium level is maintained at a very low level compared to the extracellular compartment. The calcium pumps export calcium ions from cell to the outside. So it is usually maintained by the plasma membrane calcium ATPase and endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. So why this calcium is excluded from the cytosol? One reason is that the calcium ions can bind with water and precipitates phosphate. And other reason is that unlike other molecules, these calcium ions cannot be chemically altered. So to control these calcium ions, the cells need to compartmentalize them. So the main calcium stores are endoplasmic reticulum, bulky bodies and in case of muscles, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Inositol triphosphate releases the calcium ions from endoplasmic reticulum. Thus, the calcium level will increase to much higher concentration and this will cause the proteins to get activated. So how does the calcium ions activate specific proteins? 
Once in the cytosol, the calcium ions typically binds to a small protein called as calmodulin. Calmodulin is a calcium ion binding protein which is dumbbell shaped and has four calcium binding sites. Once the four calcium ions bind to calmodulin, it activates specific proteins inside the cells such as protein kinases. For example, in muscle cells, the changes in membrane potential will cause rhinodyne receptors to open and thus help in the release of calcium ions. This will cause an increase in the intracellular calcium ions and activate specific proteins which helps in the muscle contraction. Similarly, in nerve cells, the membrane depolarization causes the voltage gated channels to open and releases calcium ions which will further increase the concentration of the intracellular calcium ions and this will help in the release of neurotransmitters. The last and final category of secondary messengers are gases for example nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide etc. Nitric oxide is a very important and most widely used secondary messenger. Nitric oxide is produced from the amino acid L-arginine by the enzymatic reaction of nitric oxide synthesis. Nitric oxide signals use specific guanylyl cyclase coupled receptors to convert the GTP to CGMP which will further activate specific proteins. Hope you all understood the basics of secondary messengers. Stay tuned to our next videos on the details of cell signaling. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe Ligis Academy, your educational catalyst.